Welcome back to the Sales Integrity Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Pickett, founder and CEO of Sales Integrity, and I'm excited to jump into today's topic. Today's topic is three key aspects of a successful sales game. Let's jump right in. Because I like alliteration, which is essentially using the same letter to start each of your key points, uh, these three key aspects start with a letter C. So we got the three C's that are the three key aspects of a successful game plan. The first C is competence. Competence. Let's look at the definition of the word competence. Uh, here's, here's what dictionary.com says. The quality of being competent, adequacy, possession of a required skill, knowledge, qualification, or capacity. So I think we all kind of knew, you know, had our had our viewpoint on what competence meant, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So you, you, you possess a required skill, knowledge, qualification, or capacity. And the reason why this is the first key aspect of a successful uh, sales game plan is because competence comes from understanding your target audience, understanding your industry niche, and understanding the value of your solution. So it's really those three things as it relates to competence. First and foremost, you want to understand your target audience. So make sure you take the time to prepare, sit down and really define, clearly define who your target audience is. And we, we handle this when we're coaching sales professionals, talking about target audience. Um, and then again, the value of your solutions would be that tangible value that they're seeking you know, through the use of your solutions, the application of your solutions to help them uh, achieve achieve their own solutions or overcome their own problems or challenges. And then the other thing is the competence in your industry niche. You, prospects, clients, they want to know that someone is really competent and understands their industry. They're a thought leader in their industry. That means they understand them as a target audience and what they're looking for and the value they're seeking out of the solution. So competence is the very first key aspect of a successful sales game plan and competence comes through understanding your target audience, industry niche, and value of your solution. So take a look at your your overall game plan. Start with competence and really evaluate yourself as it relates to competence and scoring yourself in that area. Do you feel like you have a very good understanding of your target audience? Have you even defined who your target audience is? That may seem like a basic common question, but I see this too often when I'm coaching sales professionals. They're all over the board. They're throwing whatever they can against the wall and seeing what sticks, and they're not really going after the same target audience where they can leverage stories of how they've helped other executives in their same industry niche achieve the same goals, overcome the same problems, address the same issues. Um, So they never get a chance to get repetitive and really understand a lot more about their industry niche to become a thought leader so they can address those challenges, issues, and goals that their target audience is, is facing. And and if you don't spend the time to really sit down and understand and define who your target audience is and learn more about that, that industry niche, you're never going to be able to map the value of your solutions uh, to that target audience and what they're seeking. So just keep that in mind. Competence is that first key aspect. Take a look at your sales game plan. Rate yourself honestly as to where you stand there. And the good news is if you feel like you're weak in that area or you could stand for improvement there, uh, all you got to do is really sit down and go through that exercise of defining that target audience, um, really diving in and researching your industry niche a bit more, and then go look at existing case studies or use cases of where your company has implemented your solutions before and really start to understand what was the value that those existing customers or previous customers received uh, through the use of your solution after it was implemented. That's how you could start to kind of connect the dots and map, you know, what you're doing back to what your target audience is seeking. This will also give you a purpose um, to your overall approach. So you're not going out there kind of scattershotting across the marketplace. You're going to be very focused on who you're going to target and reach out to. That's going to make your life a lot easier as it relates to prospecting. So competence, that's the first key aspect of a successful sales game plan. The next key aspect, the next C, is confidence. And as it relates to confidence, that comes from preparation. We always talk about make your sales pop. Preparation, organization, productivity being the acronym of POP. Preparation leads to organization. Organization leads to productivity. And if you're productive, you're going to achieve your sales and income goals. So we always talk about make your sales pop. Um, If you haven't heard me say that before, you're probably newer to the podcast. You should go back and listen to the early episodes. Our whole mantra is make your sales pop. That's what our entire sales achievement framework is built around. 
Um, but we talk a lot about keystone habits, which are habits that drive all your other habits. And a keystone habit can be positive or negative. And in this case, preparation is the keystone habit for all successful sales professionals. So you should really look at, as it relates to your overall sales game and sales game plan, where does preparation fit in there? That should be number one. So if you prepare, and that's what I talked about when it related to competence, if you prepare and understand who your target audience is, you understand more about your industry niche, the value that your solutions provide, that's all preparation. What's going to happen is competence then is going to lead to confidence right? So, confidence is the precursor to confidence. It's very difficult to be confident if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so, that's the easiest way to say it. If you are not prepared, um, I like to use a very common example a lot of people can relate to in the field of, of B2B complex technical selling. Think about back when you were in school, whether it was going to college or high school, or whatever it was, whatever school you went to. Think about the time when you went to take a final exam and you cram the night before because you skipped some classes, maybe you didn't study as much as you knew you should have, you showed up on game day, so to speak, which was taking the, the final exam, and you were really anxious and nervous because you just knew you didn't know everything you needed to know to either pass that test or have a good, a good score on the final exam. And therefore, as you're going through the exam, you're really kicking yourself like, man, this doesn't seem like a very difficult subject or or, or information or questions here, but if I just would have taken the time to study, what you're really saying is I wish I would have taken the time to prepare. Now think about the, the reverse of that. You know, there's times when you probably dominated that studying, right? You attended every class, you studied you know, every day, every week leading up to it, and when the final exam came along, you were so confident because you knew that you, you studied everything. You crossed every T, dotted every I, and really um, put in all the, the preparation work that you needed to to study for that exam, and, and you felt so confident that you just weren't even going to get an answer wrong, right? So that's the difference between preparation or lack of preparation. That same um, phenomenon transfers over here to the sales profession where you won't be confident if you're not competent and you can't be competent if you don't put in that time to prepare, right? So it all comes back to that keystone habit of preparation as we talk about make your sales pop. Preparation will allow you to be organized in any selling scenario that you're going to enter. And when you enter a selling scenario and you're very prepared and organized, your confidence will go way up. You're, it's going to be a productive use of your time and chances are you're going to move the ball forward to the next step. The other person you're meeting with is going to be impressed with you because it's very clear. You can tell this. When you meet with someone, if they're late or they're disheveled or they're preoccupied, you can tell they didn't prepare and they're just kind of winging it and flying by the seat of their pants. That's not very impressive. You're probably not going to want to waste your time with them in the future. Same thing with prospective customers. They're far too busy to sit down with an unprepared or ill-prepared sales professional. So don't be that sales professional. Be the one that's supremely confident. And I, I use that word supremely confident or that phrase. Um, I use that often. And that actually helps me just by communicating that, by saying, not only am I confident, Mr. Prospect or Mrs. Prospect, but I'm supremely confident that I can help you achieve your goal, right? And there's a huge difference because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm not just confident. I'm so confident I'm putting my neck on the line here because I'm really overemphasizing how confident I am. You'll never do that. You'll never say that if you're not supremely confident. So that's a very good litmus test for you that if you're willing to sit down and, and, and look a prospect in the eye and truthfully tell them, not only am I confident, but I'm supremely confident I can help you with this solution or this challenge issue or goal. Um, then you could probably dig into your sales game a little bit more and realize I didn't really prepare the way I should have. So therefore, I don't have the competence I need to be confident. So hopefully this makes sense to you that one thing leads to another. Um, competence is the very first key aspect that leads to you being confident and even dare I say supremely confident in what you're doing and I hear more times than not from from prospective customers that first become customers they're like you know there's a lot of competition out there we evaluated other solutions including doing it internally or a couple other sales coaches consultants trainers but at the end of the day you know you're all fairly competent but you're you're just so much more confident than them that that shines through and in, in being passionate. And we just wanted to work with you because we knew that not everything's perfect, not everything's going to go according to plan, but if things went astray, that you're going to make it right because you're so confident in what you're doing. We just wanted to be around that. I hear that a lot. So, you know, this may seem a little hokey to you. You may, you may feel like, yeah, I should be confident, but I'm telling you, this is one of the greatest secrets of selling success, that confidence 
is your greatest asset in, in, in your sales game because if you're confident and you're supremely confident, you're going to close a lot more business than you lose or a lot more business than you're closing today just because of that supreme confidence. So competence, key aspect number one, confidence, key aspect number two, and that leads to the third and final um, key aspect of a successful sales game plan, which is communication. That's the third C, communication. So if you're competent, and you're going to go into any selling scenario with a high degree of confidence, chances are you're going to have more clarity in the way you communicate, right? And this comes from mastering the concepts of, inf of, of influence, persuasion, and convincing. Really those three things. So communication to be, you know, effective as it relates to communication, this is the real you know, the, the real differentiator between the elite sales professionals and those that are even really good or great at the top of their game, you know, what sets apart the best of the best is this mastering communication, this aspect of the sales game, right? And so I went, you know, up in, in terms of, uh, you know, higher and higher in terms of level of or degree of difficulty here. Competence, you know, it's pretty easy for you to control. You, you determine whether you want to prepare or not and sit down and, and, and research and come up with that knowledge that you need. Then, when you go apply that knowledge in selling scenarios, your confidence is going to be high because you know what you're talking about, right? And so one thing leads to another there, but communication, this was what really sets apart the elite selling professionals from the great selling professionals. And it comes from mastering these concepts of influence, persuasion, and convincing. Let me dissect that just a bit more before we end today's uh, uh, podcast episode. So, Communication comes from mastering the concepts of influence, persuasion, and convincing. When you are competent, you're going to be influential. You're going to influence people because of your competence, the knowledge that you're going to be displaying and presenting. That's going to influence people that you are a thought leader in your industry niche. You're someone to be reckoned with, someone they want to be around because you're going to help them because you've mastered that industry niche and understand them as a target audience, what their unique challenges, issues, and goals are, and you've mapped the value of your solutions to those challenges, issues, and goals. So the first part I talk about influence as it relates to communication, you will be influential. You will be able to influence people positively because of your competence. The next concept there within communication I talked about was persuasion. You want to be, you want to be able to persuade people to your point of view and keep in mind, a lot of people think persuasion is a negative word. Oh, he persuaded me or she persuaded me. Just keep something in mind that there are no negative techniques or bad techniques, just bad people who have bad intentions and use techniques the wrong way. So just keep that in mind. If you're a good person, you're trying to help your prospects or your customers out, that it's okay to persuade them to your point of view because you're trying to guide them down a path towards making a decision to work with you because you are supremely confident you're going to help them achieve what they want to. So see how all these things lead you know, to, to the next thing. They're all interrelated and connected. Competence leads to confidence. Confidence leads to being an effective communicator. And that's the difference between the elite selling professionals and the great selling professionals. There is a, there is a, just a subtle difference there. And if you're going to be influential, you can influence people. It's because of your competence. If you're going to be able to persuade people to your point of view and get them to move forward and make decisions, right, then, then that's going to come through your confidence. Again, you're, you're able to persuade people because you're so confident in what you're doing. That's going to persuade them from you know, the status quo, not making a decision or going with someone else. And it's going to bring it to, you know, in your camp, it's going to put the ball in your court and bring it to your favor. So keep that in mind. Persuasion being the second uh, component of that communication aspect. And then finally, convincing is that third component. And if you're influential and you're persuasive, you're going to convince people to make a decision and move forward, right? And so lots of studies out there show that, you know, your greatest competitor is not the competitors you think. It's the status quo. It's customers or companies not making decisions and deciding, you know what, I haven't seen anything that's convinced me that it's going to put me in a better position than I am today or it's going to be better than us doing it on our own internally. So that status quo of not working with others and not seeking change is the greatest competitor competitor, you'll lose more deals to the status quo than you will to your largest competitor. So keep that in mind that you want to leverage these three key aspects of a successful game plan um, to, to help you out and, uh, and make sure that you win more than you lose. So let's just summarize this and wrap up today's episode. The three key aspects of a successful sales game plan, competence, 
confidence, and communication. Competence comes from understanding your target audience, understanding your industry niche, and understanding the value of your solutions. Confidence comes from preparation, careful preparation. Preparation Preparation leads to organization, organization leads to productivity, and productivity leads to you achieving your sales and income goals. And competence and confidence then lead to being an effective communicator, and, and that really comes from mastering the concept of influence, persuasion, and convincing. Influence comes from being competent. Persuasion comes from being confident. Both those things lead to you convincing your, your prospects and your customers to move forward with you on the next solution, the next initiative. Now, I'll end with this thought. We all lose at some point. Sometimes we lose to competition. Many times we lose to the status quo, meaning your prospects and clients choose to do nothing after evaluating your solution. It is your duty and obligation to yourself to put yourself in the best position to win at all times. At the end of the day, he or she who masters these three key aspects of a successful sales game plan, which are competence, confidence, and communication, will win more than their competition and win more than they lose to the status quo. So now it's time for you to put this knowledge into action by pulling it all together and applying it in the real world of selling. Go out there and make it happen. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We're going to wrap up today's episode like we always do with a few quick reminders. Um, no matter where you listen to the Sales Integrity Podcast, uh, please subscribe to it. Just subscribe to the show so you get them automatically on a weekly basis. Um, the more subscribers we have, the more we're found out there by other uh, potential subscribers. So that greatly helps the show. We are now on Stitcher Radio. So in addition to Stitcher, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And no matter where you subscribe or listen to us, please provide a five-star rating and a quick one to two sentence review. That also helps others find the podcast. So uh, help us grow the show. That would be great. Um, and also, we still have our free seven-day video email course out there. You can go to mastercomplexselling.com to subscribe to that. So again, mastercomplexselling.com. It's a free seven-day video email course titled Seven Steps to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling. So that'll do it for today. Go out there in the sales world today. Help your customers buy what they want, what they need, and what benefits them. And most importantly, go out there and make it a great day.